Okay, this is my simplified glove controller. I used a latex glove, and because they're just so big, I just put binder clips on the top. Um, I only have a 30 minute period, so I have to make things quickly. So I thought this would be a great way to make it. So I clipped it in the back to keep them from falling off. And for my uh, earth, I just made a simple band with a binder clip. Um, so we usually make a maze game in Scratch. I thought it might be a good idea to let the students use the glove as part of their project. So um, the only thing that I would do differently would be to make sure that the students labeled, oops, labeled their gloves so that they knew which way was which because it does, it takes a little while to get used to which button is which, so. Okay, that's my glove. Cheap, easy, and. All right, hello everybody. For my interactive glove, I wanted to do something a little bit more with the touch pads on the glove. So I ended up extending the fingertip pads so that way, um, you know, a little bit wider base for them to be able to play. So now I can, let's see if I can remember my directions here. Oops, haha, <laughs> clearly not. Clearly not. All right, here we go. And then this way, I can also create diagonals if I want to. It's a little easier to touch both fingers at the same time. Come on. There we go. Ah! <laughs> So that's what I did with my interactive glove. Okay, so this is my musical glove controller, pretty much built like the example we saw in class. So let's see how well I can do with Baby Shark, which I might regret later when the song's stuck in my head. Sorry. Clearly need to practice. So, 